do. All right. Day 446. Holy shit. This file's been going for a long time. Okay, yeah, so I was thinking of, like... Swapping a little bit around here. Let's see, this is 12, 15. 12, 15, that's 9. Hmm. Kraken 2.0? What? No, we're doing Black Monolith. Oh, also, I need, uh... Holy Waters. Like, this nimble gear isn't that great for this. Oh, this is nine. This is, let's do this. This is one. Sixty-six. That's, that's good enough. What do you play in Dark and Darker? Um, well, I haven't played it that much to really say for sure, I guess, but, uh... I, I think I played mostly the, uh, Sword and Shield guy. Fighter, good choice. Me. Hmm, come. You definitely want a lion art potion. You want a lion art potion. And you want a lion heart potion, probably. The bannerman could have a lion heart potion, I guess, but. Give you Lionheart Potions, give you this. I, I mean, this could be... I think this is this is the time to give... If we wanted to give somebody the water skin, this is the time to do it. But, like, does anybody... I mean, I guess Maimed Foot is the worst thing that we have. So I guess we should clear out the Maimed Foot. There you go. Okay. Um, oh yeah, I was thinking about rearranging armor here. I don't know. I could try to be more greedy with uh, sound and like dive him in there more and uh, try to get value out of the Emperor's countenance and the armor, the health regening stuff on this, but like I feel like it also could be beneficial to like have more available fatigue. So, like, let's see. This is... 
20. Do I have anything that's like less than 20? I have some 19s. What's the armor value on this? 228? I mean... This one's 15. I could maybe swap here. That gives you 60 to work with. As opposed to 55. That's pretty good. Um, we're not bringing any ranged here because... Um... We, we do have to deal with Necro Savants. Yo, Hideous with the 19 months. Here's another 19. Here's two another 19? Or here's another... This is 19 all at once? Oh my god. Thank you so very much for the support. I really do appreciate it. Don't leave any love lying around, idiots. Make sure you pick it up and take it with you. Gotta drop some love off at the pool. Okay. I think we're good. As good as we're going to get, anyway. Okay. From a distance, the black monolith looked like a black tower tilting from the earth. The sky above was without blemish. As though the clouds and birds were circumventing some unseen mountain, a numbness settled its hinterland. Terra neither dying nor growing, and a cruel silence left the listless life worse than no life at all. Adventurers went to it and did not return. Stories of their demise stacked high until their absence shielded the monolith whole, clothing it in such fear and menace no one dared go near. But now the desert deserters stand before the obelisk like ants at the steel of a stocked sword. Here you can see that the structure was not built upon the earth at all. The obelisk rests in the pit of an abandoned quarry. Roads and paths side winder into the depths like some great and hollow terra socket. Ropes carrying buckets hang across every gap. Innumerable pails of dirt left listing like fireless lanterns on a festive night. More bindings hold the frames of bridges, the walkway planks long since fallen, and more yet wrap around the monolith as though a great bevy of men had attempted to pull it down or perhaps even correct its tilt. At the bottom of this abandoned pit is the base of the monolith, but to you this is only a guess. It has every appearance of never stopping its descent into the very earth and whatever is below. Shovels and pickaxes litter about its obsidian walls with soil still clumped on their metals. Sound nods at the scene. It looks like whoever was digging here got interrupted. The man's words carry far into the quarry, and they're become so presently shaped in the echo that you just about watch them go. Looking back, you see that the silence itself has followed you in. But even here at the edge of the pit, it is pensive and cut with ease. 
The decision to enter the quarry rests heavy on your shoulders. Halfway into the quarry and rounding a long bend, you notice a series of hallways cut into the lower wall. You cast up a fist. The company seizes, bumbling into one another as the formation comes to a stop. Rapper asks what's wrong. You put a finger to your lips. With the lightest of steps, you approach one of the ropes strung between this level and the very bottom of the pit. A pail filled with soil totters on the tether as though jittered by your appearance. The pulley used to draw it up and down is long since rusted over. You draw your sword and cut the rope. The binding shoots back like a whip, and the bucket plummets. It's, it clatters side to side off the rocks until striking the ground with a metal pang and the cloud of dust. And just like that, the silence is gone. Pale men flood out of the hallways below, a stream of malignant miners and ditch diggers and haggard drawers and boots and capes of shredded shirts, shambling back out as though returning to some long-gone work left incomplete. You try and count their numbers, but they are mightily distracted when a throng of armored soldiers march out behind the mob, this outfit carrying pole arms, shields, spears, and most dangerously of all, a sense of cohesion. No point in running out of the quarry. Nothing in the land to run to. When you look back at the men, they're already drawing their weapons. Rapper nods. With you to the end, Captain. Let's do it. You got you got automated. Okay. Yeah, this is uh this is Black Monolith. Yeah, this isn't even the highest unit count that we've ever seen in this file. This is... This is a whole fight. It's a whole thing that we got going on here. I need to keep everybody close because of the necro savants. So this means I'm gonna do some shit that I might not normally do, like this. Is there a whirlwind-like ability in this game? Yes, there are several weapons that do a whirlwind-like ability. Uh, at least two. You can smash my monolith any day of the week, Billy Kimball. Alright, McQueen, but you got it there, bud. How's your day going? Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday to ya. So, I'm considering whether or not to have weird step forward one tile, 
might end up in him getting more surrounded by Necro Savants than what I want, so I think I might actually bring him down here. generally considered to be the hardest if not one of the, one of the hardest if not the hardest yeah wow what the fuck you know that guy's got 80 fucking resolve just to let you know that's pretty fucked up this is black monolith <laughs> we might be fucked right off the start because Psychedeliduck failed a 5% roll instantly. But we'll see. So there's a chance for us to die. <laughs> yeah? Yes, yes. This is a very, very difficult fight. Sorry. I wasn't trying to, trying to be an asshole. It's just a, a very, very, very hard fight. Moving my banner up here, because I I might I think I'm gonna need to try to uh, recover him. Fuck! I did accidentally ended my turn on Royal. I didn't want to do that. Oh well. You failed to fucking recover Psychedella Duck Rapper. What the fuck? Okay, so just to be perfectly fucking clear here, like, this guy has, even when he's completely broken, he's got 66 resolve. Okay. And so he's probably, at least for the first couple, of failures of the resolve check against these guys he's he's failing like a five percent roll chance every additional enemy that's adjacent to him is gonna fuck up his resolve rolls so like that sucks so like that's a couple of five percenters and like then and then this banner that we have our bannerman has really good resolve so he's at 132 resolve so his he's getting a small bonus not a huge bonus by having the banner out to his resolve, so 10% of the resolve of the character holding the standard uh, up to a maximum of the standard bearer's resolve. 
four tiles or less. So he's getting so he's getting plus ten percent of of this this. So he's getting another thirteen added, and then we get to give him give him a resolve check, which has got to be even while he's fleeing, having a sixty six. It's got to be like at least an eighty, probably like a ninety. So it's fucking ridiculous, is all that I'm fucking saying. It's kind of bullshit. So like, I don't fucking know. Whatever, man. Really, really annoying, though. I'm not- I'm not super hardcore playing on Iron Man, anyway, but like, I'm just- I'm just expressing my annoyance with the situation, is all. That guy gets one attack and then dies to the holy water. That's good. Like, all I'm saying is I want to talk to the game's manager, you know? Now the good news is, is Psychedella Duck actually will not be able to successfully flee here, which is actually good for us, because otherwise he'd get murdered. annoying that that didn't get spread out there. Whatever. Okay, so we'll see if he even survives this turn. Uh, they still have a 32% chance to hit him, which is, I guess, lower than I thought it would be. I don't know. And I guess the guy's stunned anyway. I'm gonna fucking alt it for because, like, the, I I just don't want the tank to instantly fucking die. I thought that I could recover him because we're very likely to recover him, but like, man, that is so irritating. Like, I even give him the lion heart potion to give him an additional twenty to put him up to like almost ninety. Like, I really want that guy to live a bit. Just for a minute. 
That's all. Okay, let's try it like this. Maybe. So he gets, so this if we, I guess it was this way he gets and he gets uh, let's see what his resolves at now oh we don't have my potions oh no we do I gave this guy a lionheart potion though yeah he did oh now it's okay 109 yes yeah, so he's got 109 resolve okay anyway Kind of want to just pass on these few guys, just in case these guys um, get frisky with my bannerman. They're not even hitting him with fear this time. They didn't, they didn't hit him with a fear attack one time. Why? Wow, great spread on that. That's great. Good, please, go fucking attack that guy. That'd be great. Okay, 
what's their hit chance here? 20. It's pretty good. This is melee defense. 79. Okay. He's, at least he's not breaking, I guess. We're gonna, we're gonna use Indomitable and Shield Wall on him and pass turn to get him to go later in the queue. Is the plan. What's up, Jim? How you doing today? So now he should have fucking ridiculous. 115 melee defense. And even if we take damage, uh, he's not gonna take. He's gonna take half because of Indomitable. Okay, Grud, great. What's going on, Supreme and Jim? How you doing today? Much better in start to the fights. Oodles better. Sound great, fucking job. Good. Beautiful kill, Tetra. Okay, awesome start. Doing good, Z Dredge. How you doing today? Okay. Great fucking job, Fluff. This reproach of the old gods is crushing it. Very fine, just having lunch. Nice. Good. Yeah, fuck you, ancient priests. Suck it. Good job, weird. That lightning, I've never seen such a skill. That is the reproach of the old gods. It is a weapon that you get after you defeat the Kraken, the first Kraken, and then you complete the water mill fight. I'll try to start moving up. Here. Oh, wow, what a failure. Mm. 
Nice. It's great to see that's a 5% chance still. Nice. This, they're getting this dazed effect because of the shield that he's using. down. Twenty four turns, eighteen turns. This guy's gonna be capable of doing more damage, but he's gonna die to the holy water. I think that he's capable of doing enough additional damage that maybe it's a problem. I don't think I want to put down any doggos yet. Okay, we'll just keep taunting this guy for now. I'll try to kill him here. Nice. Da 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 da. This guy is annoying. The Conqueror is a pain in the ass. It'd be great if we didn't have to deal with him, but we definitely do. Okay, 65 or a 51. So we'll go for this. We miss. Fine. Good kill, Tetra. What's the Conqueror's thing? He has fast adaptation, so every miss that he gets, he gets more accuracy until he hits. So that's kind of annoying. Just as a cleaver, but he's got this armor that when you hit him, it does damage back to you. It's the hel it's this helmet that we have. This one? That uh, reflects damage. Uh, that's what it does. But it's body armor. complete the set. Yeah, you get the armor after you win this fight. To reflect over multiple tiles, like pole arms and whips. Yeah, I think they still take reflect damage, yep. Yeah. 63.93. Do that. Fantastic. Awesome. Okay. Okay, they're up to an 8% chance to hit him. Up from a 5. So this is Psychedelidux's whole job. Just to sit here.
Okay, a little greedy. Oh, he's going next to him. Okay, that can actually kind of be a problem for Psychedella Duck. I thought he was going to come down to me. I don't know, it's just annoying either way. Disgusting. some extra hits on this Necro Savant. with him down here. We'll have the other guy finish him off. We're definitely going to use recover here. So this next turn will probably be the worst for Psychedelic. melee defense do your tanks have? Well, Psychedella Duck has Lone Wolf active and just used Shield Wall, and they're sitting here at 103, even though they're wavering, which is reducing their stats. taunt these two and I'm gonna try and kill this one if I can get a couple of a couple more swings against it Wow nice miss Of course, they go and stun us after we've already lost our turns here, which is wonderful. <laughs> so brutal, dude. <laughs> I 
Just an 81. Just an 87. here. I'm going to use this reproach of the old gods. We're going to use that on the Necro Savants that spawn over there. Still learning the game, but do you make your two-handed guys nimble dodge? How many? How do they dodge so many attacks? They have high melee defense. So, like, Korab doesn't have a shield, and he has got 62 melee defense. Part of that's because he's confident right now. But, like, almost every single one of my two-handed melee units has at least 40 melee defense. At level 11. High 30 is minimum, but like 40 plus. And a lot of these guys are very high level at this point. Uh, well, Fl Fluffy and Sound are both different builds that are a little bit less focused on having high melee defense, more focused on having a shitload of fatigue. I didn't understand what good melee defense started at. Thank you. Yep, no problem. Yeah, you really want to, like, you want two stars melee defense on a lot of people that are going to be on your front line, basically. I don't mind you being in the poison. You've got self-healing stuff. Good hit, Korab. Please don't fucking stun us, please. Please, please, come on, please don't stun! Fuck off! Oh my god, dude. At least Sake gets a turn, finally. Fucking job, in fact. Yeah, I'm gonna be able to taunt that guy, though. Oh, the dog fucking died, god damn it.
a pass on your rapper. What's up, BB Tech? How you doing today? Beautiful. A fucking amazing. Oh my god. Back to back hits, that sucks. Take half damage there well, because of Indomitable. Okay, yeah, good. I'd rather have them do that. You fucking missing a 95? Come on, man. What are you doing? You fucking idiots. Tetra, you're so fucking low, you can't miss. That's how you die! What are you fucking doing, you Dongarino? Psychedella duck. Well, Psychedella duck's dead. Yeah, he's almost assuredly dead. Because he's going to flee. Because he doesn't even have the shield wall up anymore, right? So he's probably going to flee and die. One, two, three, four. He needs to be four tiles distance. Triggers a morale check to raise the morale of anyone wavering or worse within four tiles distance. With a bonus to resolve plus 52 based on the character's resolve, but lowered by 10 per tile, does, per tile distance. It's like I can't, I can't do, do them. Not yet. Maybe next turn. I can move two tiles, swap to the thing, and doot. But it almost assuredly kills Rapper <laughs> to do that, yeah?
If I move him left of the golden guy, yeah, if I could get Rapper here, Muck, and Dutes, then you're correct. But in order to move here, look at how many tiles I have to move. You can't move, like, through multiple units like that. So I had to have one, a one AP left. So the only place that I could move to do the action would be here. I don't know. I'm gonna do it. Even if he could move through those guys, that's not, that's three tiles. He can only move two. Isn't the slot under the golden guy close enough? You're correct, Z Dredge, but I have to do it now. This is my only chance. So yes, this would be close enough. However, I can't move there because there's a guy there. If I pass my turn to try and do it later, this guy will have already not only been attacked by all of these units, but also he will have had taken his turn to flee. Now, I said, is it worth going here and trying to save this guy? I don't fucking know, because, like, he's already probably dead anyway, even with the recovery, to be honest. But, like, I don't know. I'm just going to try it. He looks pretty fucking dead to me, to be honest. Beautiful. Recover. <laughs> okay. Surely he's struck now. He's struck down. Yeah, yeah. He's guaranteed to be struck down unless he gets executed. So, I mean, there is that, but it's still not great. I just want to get him up here so that he can rotate him out if need be, which almost assuredly will be the case, but... Maybe kind of dangerous for Tetra to be here. Okay, great. You got Sake. Good job, you jerks.
Dude, could you stop hitting him in the head? He hasn't even been hitting the body once. What the fuck? This weapon's at 7% durability. What's it at now? 1%. Fuck off. Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay. Well, I guess I'm gonna grab a different fucking weapon. Okay. Pocket sword lance for the big fights. I should have a pocket sword lance. Yeah, I guess I Thought that like it has more durability than a normal sword lance does because it's a famed one uh, And it just rolled a little bit higher. So I thought it was maybe gonna have enough, but I was wrong It's just so many targets to hit Too many targets Don't die, Tetra. Okay, good. He's attacking sound for some fucking reason. I'm gonna put some doggos down just to try to maybe get units adjacent to the uh, ancient priests. Missed another 95. Fuck. There was another fight where the normal lance was at like 3%, right? Yeah. Oh my god, Sake, please. You know, I'm just, just to let you know, Sake, you are within range of this banner, so you're getting a little bit of bonus resolve. And we missed another 95 against this unit, so that's cool, too. I tried to put the dog down and then turn, and I clicked, but it uh, missed it. Well. This weapon's about ready to break, too. <laughs> really? Yeah, get out of here, Fluffy. Stand next to those fucking idiots. Is a conquer immune to disarms? I could be disarming it, but the guy, the one of my two guys that can disarm is uh, fleeing and has been stunned for the majority of turns in this combat. Um, I now I might go ahead and try to disarm him with you. He's not immune to disarm, but I think this guy might have, uh... 
some other thing. Like he might have the thing that reduces the amount of turns that those kind of things affect him. miss. Okay, Saki's almost assuredly dead, but perhaps not dead, I don't know. taunt that guy, I guess. <clears throat> well, uh, Saki has a small chance of getting away here, I guess. Ugh, that guy's so fucking low. That's brutal. Get him, dog. Come on, you're rolling the 50s, man. Okay, Saki, this is your chance. How much damage does this Miasma do? Is it 50? Or I mean not 50, is it 10? Disarm. Gain. Maybe the full arms don't do that. Get him, dogs. Yeah, maybe pole arms don't get affected by that. Okay, well, I guess I'm gonna taunt the conqueror then. You're just this guy's getting fucking absolutely clapped. Okay, good. There's this piece of shit off. Sixes, unfortunate. Wow, he hit him in the armor and did zero damage. Oh, that sucks. So brutal. I can't. I don't think I can attack this guy. I think oh, I might die. Well, I guess he's taunted. Yeah, so we'll be alright. Good.
Careful. Pretty low on uh, HP here, but not a problem. We're just about done. There we go. There it is. There's that hit we've been hunting for. Okay. Oh, did I hit the disarm? I guess maybe he's immune to it. Sorry, I, I didn't realize. I thought I just missed. Nice. There we go. Right. Hey, and Psychedella Duck just has a missing eye. Great. I mean, all right. That went way better than the last, the, for the first fight, though, when uh, Psychedella Duck completely broke on the first turn. Really shouldn't have had uh, Psychedella Duck as a lone nimble tank. I just didn't get. I only got one non nimble tank this whole run, and um, they died to the fucking Kraken, so. Yeah, Jim had six, Korab had four, Sound had eight, Tetra five, Weird five, Royal one, Ralph none, Sake four, Fluffy ten kills. And we get the Emperor's Armor. Boom. Jim, you can't have that. You can't have that. It's disappointing. Royal says as he looks at the slain corpses. He snorts and spits. Does the armor come with a new groove? Yeah, for sure. Don't think disappointing is the word for it, though. They just lie in their bones and coats, like we'd fought a closet. No flesh, no blood, it's unsatisfying. And knowing that, and thinking it true, well, that unnerves me. You've got nothing to say to such things other than there's a kernel of truth to the matter. If it weren't the issuances of its lust, why else the vigor for violence? Another cell sword calls you over, interrupting any solemn introspection. Sir, come have a look. You head over and spot a skull sitting in the bed of pauldrons like an egg in the bosom of a well-endowed southerner. The rest of its body is battered and thrown to the winds as far as you can tell. What remains is a decadent slab of chest armor. It is covered in glyphs and treatments, fortunes and historical retellings, and is embroidered with the red tassels and combs made of bristly hair. You touch the metal, and the second you do, the skull beside it powders and blows away. The mercenary seeing this shrugs rather sheepishly. If you got magical powers, I won't tell no one. You slug the sellsword on the shoulder and tell him to load the armor into the inventory for later allocation. Alright. As the men pack up to leave, you hear a voice behind you. Never were. You turn back, and the world darkens in the shrouded tunnel, your men and their voices fading into a dark until all that remains is an elderly man in a light at the end of all that black, an unsteady flicker and warble of flesh trying to hold it. You approach slowly, getting bearing on the speaker. It is a shrewd elderly man, bent at the waist and bent again at the back, and his arms are thinner than a sword's hilt. You look back to see the world of dark had followed you forward, nothing behind but blackness. Looking forward again, the man is suddenly before you. He looks so similar, 
like someone you had seen in the past and yet had forgotten. Perhaps someone you had seen in your childhood, a dying uncle glimpsed on your fourth winter in his last. He is holding a candlestick with the wax drooping over his knuckles and rolling down his wrist. You never were meant to be. Never were. Never were. Never were meant to be. You were the one they call the False King. You wake on the ground. The mercenaries are looking down at you with concerned stares. Uh, you alright, Captain? Getting up, you tell them that you just fell into a quick, quick nap. You look back at the black monolith and you can see yourself in the obelisk's reflection. And it is your reflection alone. It's really nice of your men not to hand you over to the witch hunters or the like, yeah. Alright, we did it. Good god. What a fight. We did the Goblin City yesterday, correct? have the tools to repair our gear? I guess we do. I could camp here and we could do this orc encampment. Uh, we could we could go find the witch's hut and go do that, I guess. Uh, we do, oh, we, we want to take part in the uh, noble wars a bit more. That's the next thing, I guess. So let's go get our gear repaired and I actually don't even have the tools to repair it. Yeah, I don't know if that's some some kind of a defect in my capture card that's doing that. I don't know that it does that outside of the game capture or not, because it's like not there now, but it is there during the main. I don't fucking know. I don't know. It's amazing, like channel lore. It's definitely not amazing. And I might need to get a new recapture card, which would suck. Let's check out Grafenstadt here. Some ambush trade routes. So what's your buy price? Good. Good enough for me anyway. Hmm. 
Okay. Alright, who's getting this armor? We know that it's not Jim. That's about all we know. Can't be letting Jim have any fun. <laughs> Did Jim die? No. Jim's been here the whole file. Jim's been with the company for 446 days. 290 battles and has 445 kills. Give it to sound. What's your secret to such longevity, Jim? Kill a man every day? Yeah. 445 kills and no gratification. I mean, you got a famed... You got some famed stuff. Uh, a pole arm. It's probably good. What's this Idrock armor? Your armor is kind of better than... I don't know. Your armor is good, though. We kind of want you with light armor so that you have more fatigue to work with, right? Because you're berserk. I'll tell you what. You can have this, Jim. I guess... Notice that I can't buy Dark and Darker. They have weird payment methods and I can't do credit card because I don't have a credit card. Fuck. You should be able to get a temporary... Like, there's there's like a way to, that you should be able to buy it. Like, you can get like a card that's not a credit card. Like a prepaid card or something, right? Shouldn't you be able to do that? You can get a prepaid Visa card typically here in the States, that would probably work, yeah. Yeah, that should be able to be a thing, right? Oh yeah, that makes sense too, have a friend buy it. Man, I remember as a kid, it was so difficult to get people to pay for my Ultima Online subscription. I would be begging everybody in my family, family, friends, anybody I could fucking get to 
It's just one month. I'm just I'm not gonna recur it. I'm not gonna automatically pay. I had to convince my parents to pay my Ashron's call sub when I was 14, yeah. Did you set it up for recurring, Billy? No, I didn't. No, I wasn't allowed to. That's why I had to, like, figure it out every month. It's fucking awful. Me to go kill fucking Lindworms. I don't think so. Came across Child Snatchers Cave on your way here. Child Snatchers Cave on a hill to the south. Oh? Oh, yeah. Yep, that's Child Snatchers Cave, alright. No, you know, I'm good. Yeah, thanks. Oh! Oh, the Noble Wars are over already. You're in your tent when Jim makes an entrance. He speaks bluntly. Nobles be talking, big fancy tent set up yonder and they're in there. Putting your quill pen down, you respond. Just talking? Mercenary shrugs? It's quiet, so they're either talking or killing one another real quiet like. You get up and step outside, a brisk air hits you, and on it is the scent of spices and flavors. Looking upwind, you spot the tent. Cooks and chefs are hurrying about with orders of food and other makings. Servants carry platters of meats, vegetables, and fruits. An opulent tent, black with gold embroidering. Houses with nobles. Bannermen stand outside. They take no part in the festivities. They're mostly playing cards while occasionally glancing at one another. Some are bandaged with bloodied, spotched linens. One man stands on crutches with a haggard, half-cocked knee. You ask Jim what the news is. He nods toward the scene. Well, they rolled up in about an hour ago when you were checking up the maps. We didn't want to bother you, but... Well, they seemed intent on saying so, you know. You get a good look at the noble tent. Through its opening, you can see the faint glisten of crowned heads passing back and forth. Jim spits and asks, what do you think? Who do you think won the war? You hawk and hockalugan spit and shake your head. Who gives a shite? All that matters is that you, all that matters to you is that peace means fewer contracts. Perhaps now would be a good time to put up the sword and enjoy your crowns. Or maybe say to hell with all that sentimental crap and just keep pressing forward, leading the company to even greater things. Jim has seen some shit. They could be Alps. Silently sleep murdering away. Yeah, no shit. Oh. <sighs> well, we can retire right here and now, I guess. I have to figure out something because I can't stand looking at my Twitch list. Everyone playing D and D at the moment. <laughs> Well, maybe we'll go play it, so that way you can live vicariously through my D&D play or something. I don't know. I think, I think uh, like, the only thing that we haven't done is the Witch Hut, but I don't really need to do it. I don't know. We could go give it a shot. Yeah, let's... You know what? Let's, uh... Let's go do the witch hut and then we'll end the file. Maybe we'll just we'll just die on it or something, I don't know. Don't don't hate me, music. You can figure it out, I believe. Uh let's see. Where is the witch's hut? Oh, I can go to this ancient statue and get a bonus. Uh, resolve. Here's the witch hut. Does the fight start immediately at the witch hut, or do we, like, go do something and then come back? I'm trying to remember how the fuck it works. Uh, 
let's see. Starts immediately? Okay. It's kind of what I thought I remembered. I don't think I want a ranged unit either. Alright, let's go do this. Let's go to the statue. I could have done this beforehand. Uh, before the black monolith to give us bonus uh, to our mood on our characters. <clears throat> a golden man the size of a castle sits atop his stone throne with such august stature that it must, that it seems even he, as inanimate as he is, should rule the land. And perhaps the world would be better for it. This non-speaking entity with such awesome presence would make a fine, finer ruler than a lot of skunks you constantly run into. The bulk of the statue rests upon an enormous disc made of spiraling square stones, where the coffins had to take all of two bricks to store the desert deserter's hole. Sadistic thrower, sadistic tilts his helm up. If it ain't the biggest thing I ever seen, I don't know what is. Fluffy smirks and makes a reach for the sellsword's crotch. Oh, I thought the woman folk said the little worm was the biggest thing to ever be seen. <laughs> As the company laughs, you step forward and look up. You're not much for kneeling, but you feel the urge here. The statue's staring out at the world with firm authority, and its hands are out at the sides. One upon a sword staked into the earth, and the other supinated as though to weigh justice herself. You nod at the golden sheen present before you. That there is not a single scratch of a would-be robber suggests its austere presence still has some ethereal grip on the world. But that doesn't make sense. Any smart man would be nickeling a fair share from the nicking a fair share from the statue's shins alone. A few mercenaries ask if they can have a stab at collecting some gold for themselves. No harm in it. The statue is so huge, perhaps it's scared off the lesser scapegraces by superstition alone. You've no reason to let a good thing go, like a nearly endless pile of gold shaped into something pretty. To hell with history and artistry, you tell the men to have at it. They leap to the task with tools available, but the second royal makes contact, he falls limp and slumps against the statue. Another mercenary goes to help him, brushes the enormous toe there, and collapses atop the sellsword. Just as the company begins to panic, the two mercenaries bolt back to their feet and start screaming about amazing sights, sights beyond this world, sights of the future itself. Invigorating by this, the company gladly runs themselves into the statue, the lot banging against the giant toes and falling backward like mimes unexpectedly finding a very real wall. It's the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen. But each man springs back to his feet, spilling out fantastical stories. You shrug and walk up to the statue yourself, standing before the big toe with its big toenail. The men urge you forward. Sighing, you put your hand out and touch the toenail. Nothing. Nothing happens. You fist the gap between the nail and the golden flesh. You angrily put both hands in the toe like it owes you money. Nothing. Well then, looks like you've riches to harvest. You draw your sword. Time to strike gold. Yeah, we were fit foot fisting, yeah. I think that's what it says, right? You fist- I, fi I was fisting the gap. What? You swing the sword, but the second the steel touches the golden sheen of the world... Oh, uh, you swing the sword, but the second steel touches gold, the sheen of the world flashes over you as you'd s Fuck. Reading is hard. You swing the sword, but the second steel touches gold, the sheen of the world flashes over you as though you'd struck the sun itself and drew blood. The sword continues on in the darkness like a star across the night sky, and it cuts a world of its own into reality. As though you'd slash the magician's cloth off his trick, revealing a room with pillared corners and beautiful silk curtains, and the sword continues on until it slams against the spear shaft. You look down to see a man with gilded armor and red eyes holding his guard with a grimace. He slides across the tiled floor to the... He slides across the tiled floor to his right and lets your momentum fall to the ground. And then he twirls the spear around his back and strikes it forward. You throw your arm wide and close the rank with the killer, catching the spear shaft beneath your armpit and driving forward to stab him just beneath his pauldron, driving the sword into the heart. 
The man's red eyes drain to a pure white, and he goes limp and slides right off the steel. As he clatters to the ground, you quickly look around. Against the far wall stands an enormous bed with corners of marble, each statue shaped to woman or man, each of them adorned submissively to what looks like a rising sun. There's an elderly man in the bed who's looking at you, bearded, eyes dim, weathered, familiarity in his stare. He smiles, but it quickly fades. He yells, but you don't understand the words. A shadow slides across the room. You wheel around to see a large knight with fire in his eyes bearing down with a two-hander. Parry. You step back and flip your sword crosswise and crouch at the knees to brace for impact. The killer's two-hander slams against your sword, and just like that, the world snaps away, and still frozen in a parry, you can feel the issuance of time and space fly by your side like a plow of wind, and ungodly amounts of suffering, screaming, living and dying, and in the far distance of a speck of light that fast approaches and until you arrive back in your body and your sword hits the statue and swings backwards so hard it flies out of your hands and sails through the air until stabbing into the earth with a s earthen chunk. The men look about one another. You go and fetch your sword. I think you broke it, sir, says Raven, as he gets handsy with the pinky toe. You tell him and the rest of the men to pack their things. It's time to leave this place. Looking at the statue, you see that it's all rusted bronze now. You think to ask one of the mercenaries if it had been gold earlier, but you already know the answer to that. Instead, you stare at the head of the statue, at the face. At the very familiar face. What's up, Allie? How you doing today? Boom, look at that. Everybody's happy. Everybody's hyped. Well, guess what? We're about to not be hyped. Jesus Christ, 25 goblins. What the fuck? <sighs> Quick question, what does E-E-L-I stand for? Expert, Expert, Low Starting Income, and Iron Man. They are difficulty settings when you start a file of a game in Battle Brothers. So they don't really mean anything unless you've played Battle Brothers before. Pause at the forest clearing. The hut before you stands like a mere crumb. It's so quaint and easily forgotten you wondered how it could survive. But perhaps it's totally its total banality and unassuming nature is itself a sort of armor. But you've been around this world long enough to know to trust your instinct, and right now your instinct is to wait. Soon enough the hut's door pops open, and an elderly woman hobbles out. She immediately waves in your direction. You and only you Confused, you ask why just yourself, or more particularly, why you would ever trust her to begin with. She smiles. Because I know what the false king dreams at night. The mercenaries around you turn about and ask what she said. You put a hand up and tell them to stay their ground while you have a good talk with a mysterious woman. Funny, E-E-L-I is my safe word. Yeah, that's a good, good choice, Fat Fred. Can you look into the camera and push your glasses up and say better luck next time, kid? It's my kink. That's for uh, Patreon uh, subscribers only. Parma King. That's actually already recorded. No. 
My content's on the uh, on only hands. Yeah, it's true. Let me tell you, it's fucking hot. Yeah, there's a whole lot of sexy content available to Patreon users. Oh, not an OnlyFans account, only hands. There's a command for it in chat. Exclamation point only hands. Come in with your sword drawn just to find the woman offering you a bowl of stew. She suggests it is only rabbit and potatoes, and more the former than the latter. Sheathing your sword, you take the bowl and have a seat at the table with her opposite you. A couple of candles burn nearby, and there are glyphs painted on the walls in white, and similar shapes hang from the ceiling as dream catchers. The woman puts her elbows on the table. There are trinkets wound into her hair. Clips of bird bones and feathers, she carries a weathered face, though her eyes are starkly young like pearls glimmering from the depths of a swamp. Swamp. Okay, whatever, no, no, okay. There you go. I knew you would come in, a phantom of a friend, like a moth to the flame, seeking truth which cannot be tamed. Pushing the bowl back across the table, you ask if she is a witch. She nods affirmatively and stares at you before nodding again. Good. You haven't killed me, which means you're thinking now. I am indeed a so-called witch, but I am alone, entirely alone, and hounded by the others. You might call them my sisters, but these others know who you are, just as I do. And they want your blood. They can smell it, and that is why I want to talk. What do you want? The woman draws a long object wrapped in tablecloth and sets it on the table. She throws back its linens to reveal a jagged obsidian blade with a leather strip for a grip. Cut your flesh and bleed upon the black. The hexen and the lowly craft shall come, and then you shall kill them all. After that we can talk. Sell sword and witch, witch and sell sword. You ask what's in it for you, the witch cackles. <laughs> oh, Cell Sword, you are not in the business of allegiance, but in the business of gold. And with a clever turn of coin, you know friend can turn to foe. But I offer something more a truth which cannot be seen, a truth for the false king. Yeah, IG Haiti Hay did a fucking fantastic job with that one. He's made a number of. Uh, like, kind of, I don't know, you know, he just, he just made them on his own. These, like, kind of fan videos or whatever, highlight reels or edits, and, uh, it's quite flattering. We've already come this far. The black blade rests in your hand, and your reflection rests jaggedly on its stony grooves, stretched and pulled into every divot and edge. Tis a simple stone, a simple dagger, that is all. Not the least bit heavy, but you can feel the import, like dust tossed upon a grave. There is not so much weight in the sand as there is in the throw itself. The blade is either loss or gain. This blade is either loss or gain, and there's only one way to see which. The witch nods. You nod back and slash your upper arm. The blood pools under the stone and your reflections disappear beneath the crimson. Almost growling, the witch eagerly leans in and presses the blade against the skin. More! More, Selsword! More! You slash again and flex. A spurt hits the stone 
She takes the knife and slaps a spotless cloth under the wound. Well enough, Selsword. Go to your men and prepare. You stand and look at the woman. You ask, Once I kill your enemies, then we'll talk again? She smiles. In so many words, yes. Then I will do so. When you step outside and inform the company that hostiles are coming, soon enough the haggard women are spotted walking between the trees of the forest, their long fingernails scratching across the bark and their drooling lips sniveling up to snort and cackle. At first, the first to come through has a long head shaped like a canoe. An infant skull dangles from her necklace, and a leather bag bounces at her hip, two rabbit feet sticking out of the pouch. She glares at the hut and sniffs the air, and shifts her eyes upon you. Ah, you've made a covenant with that bitch. You nod. The deal's been made, aye. And it will end with you dying on the end of this blade. And I believe she prefers to be called witch. Another Hexen steps forward. We prefer to call her cunt. Kill the cell swords, take the captain alive, but remove his eyes and that lousy tongue. The throng of witches rush forward, some already shifting into licentious-looking younglings, while others revolve their arms in ritual rites. To battle against Gator! Oh! Ooh, uh, look at this. Look at this beautiful freaking. Uh, position for our archer. Well, it doesn't look too hard. As soon as we get hit with any kind of Hexen abilities, we're going to be in serious deep shit. Like, you know, if... Yeah, so... Nothing ever looks hard in a witch fight until the fight gets hard. Uh, no, I didn't use any Lionheart butts. I don't have any. I did uh, go to the golden statue to get everybody more likely to start the fight with confident though. Wow, he attacked... <laughs> he attacked Ralph? Wow, he had a 44% chance to hit. Jesus Christ, why are our stats so good? I want to use my reproach of the old gods there. That seems like a mistake. Oh, fuck. Oh, well. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, fuck off with your kisses. Stop it. Stop trying to get sound to s switch. Oh my god, he ate my tank. What a dick. Okay, good. Good job, sound. Way to resist. So we do have a hex on this one. So, th like, these two both have the hex active. So what the hex does is if the witch dies, then whoever they're hexed with dies as well. This, the vice versa is also true, so if you're okay with killing your own unit, this is also <laughs> effective, but not really something that I'm interested in. Really close on that one, but not quite. I'm... I'm pretty sure if that unit, if my unit, if they die, my guy dies. I don't, I guess I don't know for sure, but I thought that I, every time I've ever killed a Hexen that had that, it's killed my brother. This character has been cursed to feel the same pain and receive the same wounds as another character. Be careful, as it could kill him. The effect will persist for one more turn. Maybe it maybe it isn't. I guess we could science it. You can kill a Hexen with a Hex up without killing your brother if you do low enough damage or he has high enough damage. Okay. Maybe, maybe we can then. Dude, would you fucking stop that, dude? Come on. Oh my god. This guy's gonna fucking murder me. Good job, Mark. Fluffy is over here, fucking swapping. Oh god. Swap into the reproach. Got a witch dead, so that's good. Good. Nice kill, Gorbachev. Let's fucking go. Good fucking kill, bud. Yo, what the fuck, man? Don't be a dick. What's up, Vile? How you doing today? What's up, Ham Banana and Winter? How you doing today? Good. Mm, that's good. Nice. 
91. Missed a 95! Fuck! Oh my god, dude. Why are you like this? Good, minus allergic bronchitis. Ugh, gross. I received reimbursement from my orthopedics office, but they misspelled my name, so I can't deposit it. Ugh. That's fucking awful. Okay, I want to do this, kill this, move forward, and then attack the hex again. And we missed the 72. Okay, great. Awesome. Good. Take that, witch. You nasty bitch. Thank you for failing. Appreciate you. Okay, I can't... I don't have a good shot on that, which... I could move forward. I have some concerns about this unold, though. Good, 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 good. Oh my god, what a dick. Back here, you bastard. They've been attempting to get sound to, to transfer over the whole fight, and they've failed every time, which is so great, because... Fuck that. Ow. Oh my god. What a jerk. Thing shouldn't be able to devour corpses with their tummies full. There's always room for corpses. Always room. What's up, Mekons? How you doing today? There's always room for more ham. That's right, number 10. How you doing? You got it. Wow. Look at this. How often do you see unholds getting injuries like that? Nice shot, Gorbachev. Okay. 
Good. All right. You've got the high ground now. Gotta take this guy out. <laughs> I'm sure that's not a dangerous position to be in. Don't worry about it. been away for a week. When did you do Monolith at the beginning of the stream today? I don't know how you did it, but why did you get me sick, Billy? Now I gotta watch you and nap. Oh, man. Sorry about that. Black Marsh Stew. Provisions. Black as the marshes it hails from. This ghastly stew is far from delicious, but it takes ages to spoil. Possibly because it's already spoiled to begin with. Okay. Well, our... Our... Lone Wolf Tank did get downed in the fight, but it wasn't a permanent death because of the Surgeon. Yes, five days. Yes, not even as good as the, like, the rations that are actually good forever. The last of the witches is slain, and you have their corpses mutilated for good measure. Ears, lips, noses, toes, all of them cut off. Their bags are emptied out and the items crushed into powder and covered in dust. Fleshy bits or animal parts are dumped into a pit and promptly burned. As the fire rises, the hexen from the hut seemingly appears out of nowhere and takes you by the arm. Your men draw their swords, but you hold your hand up. You tell them to keep salting the earth, so to speak, and as you, ed ed as you enter the hut, you take a look back to see a few of the men pissing on the embers of the fire. Inside the hut, you sit where you had before. On the table, you find something rolled up in a handkerchief, and the witch pinches its corner and rolls it between her finger and thumb. She looks up and tips her chin forward and turns her hand palms up. Um... What's Davgul? Shrugging and leaning back, the Hexen asks you to repeat the name Davkul. She shakes her head. I've heard nothing about this Davkul. A supposed god, you say? Well, he's not spoken to me. You stare at her and try to pry a hidden truth from her eyes, but she seems earnest in her response, and you change the subject. Old Davy Cool. The old, old Davy C. What legendary locations do we have left? No, we did everything. We did Black Monolith at the start of the stream. We did the Sunken Library two days ago, or like on Friday or something like that. Um, we just did Witch's Hut, which is the only thing that we hadn't done. We did Goblin City. Old Daddy Cool. Who are you? The witch smiles. An old hag in a forest hut. Everything else is hearsay. 
You stare at her long enough to see there's little fruit to bear in chasing this question further. Who were the ancients? She taps the handkerchiefs and whatever's beneath the wraps the ta whatever is beneath wraps the table. She answers, "The ancients were men before our time, Tr truly, truly before our time. Imagine a kingdom. Now imagine a kingdom that ruled kingdoms, an empire. That's correct. Now imagine an empire that ruled empires, unfathomable power, such that it leaves the world with great vengeance, and will spend its dying days ruining those which have ruined it." You ask if the empire is dead. The witch smiles. I suspect not. But I do not truly know. Were the Greenskins human? Hexen cackles. I wish. Have you seen what orcs got between their legs? Wouldn't mind a ride on that if I knew it wouldn't tear me in half and fark one end while wearing the other for a glove. You raise, you raise an eyebrow and nod as though you say, of course. <laughs> Battle Brothers 18 plus. Oh, absolutely. This is for mature audiences only. Hmm? They don't have legs, so how is that possible? We just can't see anything below the below the waist. That's all. <laughs> Be one scare roused. <laughs> Why did you call me the false king? For the first time, there is a crack in the witch's facade. She purses her lips. When did I call you that? You point to the door and then to the table. You answer. I walked in here, and you said I'd seek the truth. That you know what the false king dreams of. Hexen taps the handkerchief rather mindlessly. She looks up. Then you have my apologies, Cell Sword. I remember no such thing. I am but a fragile and old woman, older than I look, and I'm not being cheeky about that. You press her on the matter, but she only stonewalls you further. How do you know who I am? She stares at the wrapped item. I don't even know your name, Cell Sword, and I haven't the slightest inclination to begin to care. It is not a matter of who you are, but what you are. She turns her hands as though they were following a tune. The blood of the ancients resides within you. It resides within us all, but you in particular. Well... Her nose crinkles and s as she snorts, and she exhales. She grins madly. It is ever so there, and if I can smell it, then the whole world can smell it. What is it that I dream of? The Hexen leans forward. She puts her hands to your face, and you feel the leathery fingers press deep into your cheeks like half a dozen walnuts. They rub the corners of your eyes and tap your temples. All the while, she is smiling, and then she pulls back. You go to the noblemen and the rich, and they pay you gold, and in return you risk your life and them, and you slaughter and you murder and you kill it all that you can. And there you are, day after day, wondering if that's all you're good for. And afterward, the highborn shut the door on you and your deeds. And you hear them inside, having a grand time, music playing, women folk laughing, just as joking, the festivities are riotous. And you are outside with a bag of gold in hand and its blood-soaked receipt. And you go down to the pub and buy yourself a whore and tip a coin to the minstrel for a song. And you can taste a fine wine even in the cheapest of cellars. But there is no escape from that horrible feeling in the back of your head. The feeling that you were born into fever and all this violence and death is not a means to an end, but the end itself. It is what you are and what you always will be. She pauses, sighs, continues. <sighs> Cell sword, the power of a lie is only equaled by one's desire to believe in it. You live in a powerful lie, and such power will not go easily. I beg you, be only what you can understand. It was not yourself, or your weaponry, or the presence of your company whole which brought her fear, but only the dawning of some unknown realization as she speaks to you now. Who am I? What's going on? You stand up, yelling at the woman for answers. She slaps you in the face, and you stiffen and falter back a step. 
A, a drop of blood slips down your cheek, and you catch it in your cuff. The witch grabs the handkerchief and throws it off, revealing the obsidian blade beneath. It is sharper than you remember. A vivid sliver of yourself running down the edge as though you cracked a door toward a mirror. The Hexen sits back down and pushes the weapon across the table. No more questions, Selsword. There's only so much I know, and so much you need to know. We've made a deal, and this is the end of it. Taking the dagger, you ask if you ask what she did to it, but she refuses to answer. You then ask if there are more out there like her. She grins playfully. I pray there are not. Dude, she's just an old lady in a hut looking for some orc dong, okay? That thing swings between their legs like a fucking grandfather clock, alright? Like, it's... Look, she's just looking... Like... She's working on it. She's just an old, horny schizo lady, yeah. The true orc berserker flail. <laughs> Gain an obsidian dagger. You're done then, and I shall take my leave. I, I don't think this does anything. I don't remember. I'm not going to try and kill her. We're done then, and I shall take my leave. You bid the witch adieu, and she says nothing more. Outside, the men ask what she said. While others making reference to sexual escapades, you think you're smirking, but you don't really know. The conversation has left you in a fog, and from within the mist, you only depend upon what you know. Ordering the company back on the road. First, get out of here. Alright. Well, that's it. We did everything. We had every single... Um... Uh, every single crisis event... The first one was, uh, well, the first one was Undead Crisis, was it? Undead, followed by Greenskin, followed by Holy War, followed by Noble War. How far away are we from Invincible? Uh, very, unfortunately. It would take probably another 30 hours of gameplay if I had to guess. I don't know, maybe we could do it faster than that, but, like, it takes a long time to get to eight. Um, the dagger is, uh, 25 to 45 with 20 and 70. Resurrects any human killed with it as a weeder ganger fighting for you. Six thousand. Six thousand would still take a pretty decent amount of time, to be honest. Early on, that's great. <laughs> yeah, good luck fighting the witches with, uh, early on, brothers. Hmm. Resurrection takes away from the loot, uh, from the fight because it becomes an ally. Okay. Seems possible, yeah. Well, uh, I think, uh, I think I'm pretty content with this file. We could try to grind out to 6,000, but, um, when does the invincible rank start? 8,000 renown. And we are at 5,000... 593 so GG's though I think I'm pretty uh, pretty happy with that let me um, really quick let's take a look at the spreadsheet so so these were the builds that we did right we didn't do anything different this run I don't think
Does it give the loot back if you die, let it die again in the fight? I doubt it. Not, not based on that description, but... Uh, we didn't, we didn't run a duelist. But, um... Uh, for for the the bow only, uh, we ran fast adaptation over quick hands. Worked quite well at picking off ranged units, which is. Necros, etc. Would build with FA again. The, uh, so, okay, yeah, yeah, the, uh, two-handed, he was a, he was a two-handed sword berserker. Um, yeah, hold on, I'll show it in a second. So we, we took Recover on you. Recover felt bad, can't kill an enemy and use it. Would have been better to have Executioner for the extra damage to injured enemies, probably. Um, okay, so yeah, this two-handed sword land or the two-handed sword guy. Is <clears throat> so so we didn't build him specifically for the reproach of the old gods. I've done this before. I, I like having a berserk sword lancer in the party, so I'll usually pick a character who's like really good. Um, that has a lot of fatigue to work with, which this guy was a hedge knight with three stars fatigue, so... I mean, like, he's got more than 150 fatigue. Uh, 151 at level 18. So he's completely fucking crushing it. Melee defense is a little lacking. Exclamation point BB builds. So usually what we do is we do this. This is the this is the two-handed sword built, uh, but this here's what the here's what the perks are. Um, uh, let's see. So we're gonna so melee the things that we're looking for here may are melee attack fatigue decent melee defense but doesn't have to be perfect. Uh so we did um Colossus, Gifted, Quick Hands, Pathfinder, Underdog, Reach, Advantage. Uh, well, pro probably after Underdog we take Berserk, or, or probably rather Battleforged. Berserk. Battleforged Berserk. Reach advantage. K 
killing frenzy. Like, I, I could see an argument for having underdog on fewer brothers, given our likelihood of keeping brothers adjacent to each other, but it's still nice to just get sometimes the bonus. Like, any time that a brother does get in danger like that, to just get... To have enemies get less of an advantage over you is so fucking strong. Like, it just seems really good, especially in the more challenging fights. And then, uh, sword mastery. Uh, so, so something specifically with this build is like, um, the, uh, I like having one tinted sword like this, sword build like this. Which can also use the approach to the old gods. I'll just put the Kraken sword um, once we get that. Reach advantage can help. With lack of melee defense, but maybe if we plan on using Kraken Sword Duelist, maybe. Okay. I don't know. Not 100% uh, sure on that. Uh, we have the seed that we use down here as well, and uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty uh, pretty happy with this file overall. We didn't we didn't run any duelists in this file. Um, uh, we never found any good one-handed weapons at all. So I was never really tempted to do so. Like, the only famed one-handed weapons that we saw multiple of were flails, and I used it on my two-handed flail. Um, the other thing that we did do this file, which was a little bit different, was, like, we, we, we did do a... Like, a we did a flail berserker, but, like, it wasn't... I don't know that it was, like, anything worth talking about, necessarily. So, yeah, I think that's about it. So, let's get this baby retired. Man, that feels really fucking low for points, honestly. Taking over the desert deserters, you had a vision for the company and its men. A vision that ended with you sitting on a king's throne in the world's most expensive wine sloshing around a golden goblet. That part didn't come true, but you did manage to lead the company to great heights in the civil war amongst the nobles. Such struggles are inevitable amongst the highborn, and you took great advantage of the conflict to earn the desert deserters' renown and riches. Of course, the brutality of the fighting also taught you that life was short and fickle for a fighting man. Once things settled down, you realized that to the nobility it didn't matter in the least who you were and what part you played in the conflict. You were just a cog. And you would always be just a cog. Taking that moment of reflection seriously, you decided to retire, leaving the company in about as good of a state as you could. Korab retired from fighting and disappeared off the map. You haven't heard word of the man since, but there are rumors that a certain nobleman had one of his vaults completely drained in a perfectly executed heist. Adventurousness never leaves the soul of a man like Sake. Instead of returning to his noble family, he left the desert deserters and headed east in search of rare beasts. Word has it he returned to town with the head of what looked like a giant lizard. But you don't believe such a fantastical tripe. With good mind and health, you continue to live out the rest of your days in moderate peace. The most awful thing to happen to you in months was when a hermit ventured out of the wilderness to steal your firewood. That's the sort of life you always wanted, and you could not be happier having it.
All right. Like, trying to get up to 6,000 uh, renown is, like, possible. Like, we could do it, but I don't know. This feels a little grindy. We did a lot of work that file. We had a lot of strong brothers. We had a lot of deaths. But, uh, it's good. GG's. GG's. No, I've never done an only nimble run like that. Like, one of the next... I, I wouldn't mind trying to do a... Like, we could give an, another go for a uh, lone wolf run. But, um, yeah. Like, the really... The thing that would be super shitty about doing a nimble only run would be, like, the complete lack of gear. Like, it was, it's a struggle to get gear for brothers that is, like, famed gear. But, like, also, if you have everybody the same class or you're trying to get everybody the same kind of gear like it just becomes kind of impossible but anyway 